coming up this evening, live from New York City. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos criticizing President Biden over his policy seeking to bring down gas prices. What did Biden say? We look at a business in New York that sells products that are 100% made in the U.S. Even the packaging is produced in America. Electric car maker Tesla delivers far fewer vehicles in the second quarter. What's China got to do with it? That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Great to have you with us. Chenny Wu here for NTD Business. Happy Independence Day. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos calling out President Biden over his new push to bring down gas prices. Biden is targeting gas station owners, ordering them to lower prices over the weekend. Bezos calls it a, quote, misdirection. NTD's Sean Marshall has more. Over the weekend, President Biden said to companies running gas stations, bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you're paying for the product and do it now. The average cost of gas is currently $4.80. The U.S. Oil and Gas Association responded, working on it, Mr. President. In the meantime, have a happy 4th and please make sure the White House intern who posted this tweet registers for Econ 101 for the fall semester. The gas that we use to power cars starts out as crude oil, which is extracted from the ground, then refined, stored in large tanks, and eventually sent to the gas stations. The gas station doesn't say, oh, the price went down on the stock exchange, so I'll lower my price. Lauren Fix is an automotive expert at Car Coach Reports. Fix says, What they do is, this gas tank that's under the ground needs to be refilled. It's going to cost me this amount of money from the distributor. And so they base the price off what it costs to refill the tank. Research shows the profit gas stations make on their gas is only 1.4% of the revenues they make on their gas. So if they're selling for $5 a gallon, they're only making seven cents off of that. An analysis by The Hustle found that gas stations make most of their profits from their convenience stores, not from gas. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos also joined in on Biden's Twitter thread, saying that this statement is either straight ahead, misdirection, or a deep misunderstanding of basic market dynamics. Sean Marshall, NTD News. This 4th of July, as Americans celebrate the nation's birthday, we take a look at a store that celebrates American-made products. At the Made in America store, every single thing is completely manufactured in the U.S. And here to talk to NTD's Don Ma is its founder and owner. And here with us is Mark Andel. He's the founder and owner of the Made in America store. Everything in the store is 100% Made in America, even down to the packaging. Mark, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having us. So how's business these days, especially around 4th of July? Yeah, 4th of July is always good. It's America's birthday, and we've been doing good. We've got a lot of things we're facing, uh, you know, with rapid inflation, product shortage, and worker shortage. But now with the pandemic, we're two years out of the, you know, going through the pandemic, and things are very tough, probably the toughest years I've had in business. So our, our mission uh, is to create and save quality livelihoods in the United States of America by increasing American manufacturing. I think it's stronger than ever. It makes more sense. We need more common sense. But I think our vendors are doing very well. They've got the demand they wanted because the pandemic, Don, showed us that we didn't even make PPP products or masks and certain things that, you know, a country, I believe in supporting a country of living 50-50 fair trade, Don. What motivated you to start this store? What was the biggest reason factors? Yeah, well, my main company is uh, General Welding and Fabricating. Uh, we're a manufacturer welding fa- fabrication house. And back in... Uh, 07, 08, 09, the recession, we lost half our business to China. I had 70 employees. Uh, of the 70 employees, 18 family members, three guys I went to kindergarten with. I had to lay off 40 employees, and they were a lot of the ones that believed in me. And it forced me to really take a look at what we make in America uh, anymore, and uh, it, it wasn't much. So I, I, I kind of made a task. Our concept and core value was to make things, you know, to sell things 100% made in America. Now, I believe you've opened the store for 12 years now. What, what kind of products do you have? How many and how many businesses have you worked with or supported? Yeah, we opened April 3rd, 2010. We're up to 10,000 products. Uh, we support 500 privately owned American businesses. But we don't have one thing that uh, plugs in or is electronic. And I always joke, we've been to the moon, but we can't make a toaster no more. What would you say for, to those who argue uh, you could sell your products for cheaper, you know, if you just uh, imported made in China products? 
Yeah, you know, I, 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 but again, I believe in supporting the country. We, we supply the customer of the world, and China is the factory of the world, if you would. But we, uh, we believe in selling quality products, and we believe we've got to get back there. Uh, the middle class is very important, and I think the middle class has been hit. I think supporting skilled trades is important. Uh, kids, our students, our schools need to get metal shops and wood shops back in these uh, schools because we need skilled workers right now, Don. There isn't many, and I support entrepreneurs and inventors with my store. Um, you know, every house should have a garage, I believe in, because that's where I started. And making things is not only cool and neat, but supporting the country you live in is very important. And right now, it's more important than ever. I think Made in America would bring back a lot of unite people again, allow them to make their own money. And, uh, you know, we believe in working hard in that American can-do spirit. Now, Mark, how do you convince someone to buy American if it's more expensive, especially when inflation's so high? Yeah, it's tough, but a lot of the myth was that a lot of made in America products are more expensive than the other foreign products, but it's just not true. Our profit margins may be smaller, but our companies are getting a lot of demand because, Don, we don't need shipping containers. Throughout this pandemic, you heard about shipping containers being held. I joked, we don't need shipping containers at the Made in America store. Logistically, it's smart to make things in your own country. And I think that's coming true. But, you know, again, we push quality and we push and kind of explain. You know, when you make a purchase, vote with your dollar, you're actually creating a job for your neighbor by what you buy. I think we all have to make Made in America important again. And why do you think it's important? We talk about jobs and and the economy, but to you, what is the most important reason for supporting Made in America? Yeah, Made in America does a lot. It brings people together, but it allows people to make a living and earn a dollar yourself. I'm all about livelihoods, Don. To be able to earn your own dollar and uh, earn your own way, that's the American dream. Um, and I think, you know, it was lost. We took our eye off the ball. But right now, we've got to get back to making things in our country. And I think it'll take care of a lot of problems in this country by keeping people working, giving them opportunity and purpose. Mark Andel, founder and owner of the Made in America store. Thanks for coming on. Happy Fourth of July. Yeah, no, thank you, Don. And again, we have madeinamericastore.com if anybody wants to take a look. FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr has accused TikTok of lying. The latest news in his attempts to get it off of Google and Apple app stores. Over the weekend, TikTok executive Michael Beckerman said it was, quote, simply false for Carr to say TikTok collects face prints, browsing histories, and keystroke patterns. Carr responded that he was directly quoting TikTok's own disclosures. Carr had earlier accused TikTok of harvesting swaths of sensitive data that the Chinese regime can access. When CNN Brian Stelter asked TikTok executive Michael Beckerman if any CCP member has seen non-public user data, Beckerman didn't directly answer the question. He responded that they've, quote, never shared information with the Chinese government. Meanwhile, Commissioner Carr told both Google and Apple that if TikTok is not removed from their stores, they will have to provide statements to him by July 8th. The last we checked, TikTok is still on both platforms. Another blow to China's property market. Chinese developer Shimao Group missed repayment of a billion-dollar offshore bond. The bond was due Sunday. The $1 billion includes principal payments as well as interest to creditors. The developer said that the missed payment was due to, quote, market uncertainties over debt refinancing and challenging operating and funding conditions. This was the first missed public offshore payment for Shimao. The company is the sixth largest issuer among Chinese developers, with an outstanding $6 billion in international bonds. Tesla delivered far fewer cars in the last quarter because of the lockdowns in China. Tesla is relying more and more on the country to ramp up production. Here's more. Tesla delivered 17.9 fewer electric vehicles in the second quarter from the previous quarter as China's COVID-19 related shutdown disrupted its production and supply chain. A resurgence in COVID-19 cases in China had forced Tesla to temporarily suspend production at its Shanghai factory and also affected suppliers' facilities in the country. Tesla is ramping up production at the Shanghai factory with the easing of the COVID-19 lockdown, which will help boost deliveries in the second half. China has been instrumental in Tesla's rapid increase of vehicle production, with the low-cost, lucrative Shanghai factory producing roughly half of the company's total cars delivered last year. CEO Elon Musk has said demand for Tesla vehicles remains strong, but supply chain challenges still remain. 
Sri Lanka is struggling to raise $587 million to pay for about half a dozen fuel shipments. The financial crisis is the worst in decades for the island of 22 million people. The country is also unable to pay for imports of essential food items, fertilizer and medicines due to the severe dollar crunch. The Sri Lankan power and energy minister said new fuel shipments were being lined up. But the country is struggling to raise enough funds to pay, as the central bank can supply only about $125 million. Faced with a severely limited supply of gasoline and diesel, the island last week closed schools, asked public employees to work from home, and restricted government fuel supplies to essential services. International Monetary Fund officials will continue to hold talks with Sri Lanka for a possible $3 billion bailout package. The global lender made the announcement last week after a 10-day visit to the capital city of Colombo. British low-cost airline EasyJet's chief operating officer has resigned. The airline said today Peter Ballou quit late last week to pursue other opportunities. Ballou's resignation comes during a troubled time for EasyJet. It canceled thousands of flights this summer to try to limit the disruption caused to passengers due to staff shortages. EasyJet appointed appointed David Morgan as interim COO. Carriers all over Europe have been hit hard by cancellations, staff shortages and strikes. Today, Brussels Airlines cut close to 700 flights over the summer holiday. It said it was needed to reduce workload and avoid strikes. The airline said it would lead to around $10.6 million in lost revenue. Staff shortages in Spain and Portugal have left hotels and restaurants scrambling for new hires. It's forcing them to snap up people with no particular skills or experience. NTD's Sean Marshall has a story. No experience, no resume, no problem at all in some of Europe's top tourist destinations. Hotels, bars, and restaurants in Spain and Portugal are fighting a fierce war for workers. Waiters and other workers are in such short supply that firms are willing to hire almost anyone willing to join. Marveni Rodriguez runs a bar in Madrid. There's a waiter's crisis because of all we have been talking about, salaries and long hours. But I think this is a structural crisis of the economy and work in Spain, not just in the hospitality sector. And if we keep on lacking waiters, what will happen in the future is that there will be no bars. There shouldn't be a shortage of job seekers, with young employment above 20 percent in Portugal and near 30 percent in Spain. But workers and unions blame unsociable hours, low pay and short contracts for putting people off the hospitality sector. That leaves Spain's catering trade alone, short of 200,000 workers. It's a similar story over in Portugal, where hotels need another 15,000 staff. In Lisbon, Miguel Andrade is operations director at PHC Hotels Group. If there are no workers available, if we cannot recruit, we will have to cut services, cut our availability to work. And this is regrettable and dramatic for an industry that has had no revenue for the last two years, that is very undercapitalized and that needs to respond to existing demand. The shortages come at a bad time, with demand rebounding after years of lockdowns. Searches for summer flights to Spain and Portugal have jumped as much as 156% from last year. Travel looks set to match or surpass pre-health crisis levels. The tourists want to come to Spain and Portugal, but the bars and hotels may not be ready to welcome them. Sean Marshall, NTD News. Still to come, a Burger King employee rewarded for decades of hard work. He's received hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations after a video went viral. An Olympic swimmer auctioning off half his medals for charity to benefit children with terminal illnesses. That and more coming up on NTD Business. Welcome back. Just in time for the fourth, a daring high seas voyage tracing the route of the original Mayflower, but with no crew and no captain. Here's the story. 
While Americans were preparing to commemorate the country's independence with historical hoopla, hot dogs, and high-flying fireworks, a high-tech high-seas adventure boat brought the country's origins full circle and no one was even on board. The pilotless Mayflower Autonomous Ship just completed a 3,500-mile transatlantic trip, recreating the original Mayflower's historic voyage low some 400 years ago. The vessel had no crew or captain on board and instead used solar power, AI, and real-time data to navigate the sea before docking in Plymouth, Massachusetts, next to a replica of the original Mayflower. The ship is a collaboration between IBM and marine research nonprofit Promare. It'll be used to further research in fields like ocean pollution and marine conservation. They say good things come to those who wait. A Burger King employee who never missed a day in 27 years has received hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations. It's after a video went viral showing his workplace giving him a bag of small gifts as a thank you. Kevin Ford, who has worked at a Las Vegas Burger King since 1995, gratefully accepted the gifts. But people on social media were upset, feeling he deserved more. Ford's daughter then set up a GoFundMe page for her dad. She said if anyone felt like donating, he'd love to visit his grandchildren. At first, the goal was $200. But as of Monday, it's raised over $340,000. And Kevin Ford got his wish. He flew to New York City last week to see his grandkids, after not seeing them for more than four years. 12-time Olympic medalist Ryan Lochte is auctioning off half of his medals to benefit a children's charity. Lochte's 12 Olympic medals are tied for the second most among swimmers, trailing only Michael Phelps' total of 28. The 37-year-old Lochte, who has competed in four Olympics, wants to sell his medals to benefit the George Nation Foundation. The South Florida charity is one he's worked with for 10 years. Much like Make-A-Wish, it helps children with terminal illnesses. Boston-based RR Auction will handle the sale, which is expected to raise at least $82,000 for the nonprofit. Lochte, who has kids of his own now, says he didn't want the medals collecting dust when the proceeds could help children in need. Holidays are usually big at the box office. Let's see which movies are faring the best this 4th of July weekend. Here are the early box office estimates for Friday through Sunday ticket sales. I know you're scared. The Black Phone fell to fifth place with $12.3 million, pushing the Fright film close to $50 million in domestic box office. Jurassic World Dominion is up to $335 million domestic after a fourth place weekend worth $15.7 million. Elvis fell to third with $19 million, giving the biopic a domestic total of $72 million after its second weekend in theaters. Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. As Tom Cruise celebrated his 60th birthday, Top Gun Maverick made another $25.5 million for a domestic total of $571 million. Minions The Rise of Gru easily rode to victory in its opening weekend. The fifth movie in the Despicable Me franchise led the way with $108.5 million. Chick-fil-A remains the head of the pack, not just in the fast food industry, but of all restaurants for customer service satisfaction. The American Customer Satisfaction Index is out with its annual scores. Chick-fil-A's grade of 83 keeps it, keeps it in the top spot for eight years in a row. Jimmy John's grabs a 79 score, with Domino's and KFC just below with grades of 78. Last place in the rankings is, is McDonald's with a customer satisfaction score of 68. The ACSI restaurant study finds in the bigger picture, full service still beats fast food in customer experience. Amid a record-breaking heat wave, residents in Tokyo are turning to cold desserts to get some relief. NTD's Colin Fredrickson has the details. Long lines formed outside Saika a Japanese shaved iced restaurant in Tokyo's traditional Asakasa area. Customers waited patiently to eat its signature dessert to stay cool. It's really hot today, so I came here to eat shaved ice. It's very sweet, cold, and delicious. An unusually high number of customers have visited the 10-year-old restaurant this month. 
I think it's because the rainy season is gone and it's gotten hotter earlier. So that's probably why we have more customers now. Japan braced for its hottest day yet of a record-breaking heat wave. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida called for a ramp-up of nuclear power use. We were going to go on a picnic, but it was too hot, and the heat would make us dizzy. So we came here to eat shaved ice, to stay cool. Some manufacturers announced plans to scale back production to save electricity, as temperatures of around 104 degrees Fahrenheit were predicted in areas surrounding Tokyo. I can take the heat only when using an air conditioner during the night. But during the day, I need to use both the fan and the air conditioner, otherwise I would perspire. It's really hot. It's the fifth day of a heat wave, the worst heat for this time of year since records began in 1875. The Japan Meteorological Agency forecasts Tokyo temperatures won't drop back to 86 degrees Fahrenheit until July 5th. Colin Fredrickson, NTD News. Hungary hosted an off-road adventure for thousands of 4x4 vehicles. The road festival brings together motorists in their cars for a few days driving across challenging, muddy terrain. NTD's Andrew Thomas has the details. It's mud and mayhem in Hungary. Off-road enthusiasts and their vehicles are in the dirt at the Babode Off-Road Festival. The off-road festival has become one of Europe's most important such events. This off-roader society is a specific micro-community with a specific micro-climate. We just call them the tribes of Babode. Around 1,500 4x4 vehicles and 30,000 visitors spent the second weekend of June sliding through the mud. It's the 36th edition of the event, which is now the biggest off-road car festival in Europe. The festival includes the typical factory-built SUVs, and then there are custom vehicles. I think all off-roaders are a bit like children, too. We are living in our childhood, 20, 30, 40 years ago, and today we are realizing our dreams that were important to us back then, in a time when there were no mobile phones, no electric cars, nothing like that. So here it's a bit of the past. It's a playground of the past. One thing you won't see here is electric vehicles. This is a haven for gas engine fans. Anyone who's ever been touched by the smell of gas comes here to be involved in all this fun. This could be the off-roaders last decade of using their modified gas cars. So while it lasts, they will continue to show their fellow motorists what a machine can achieve on challenging terrain. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. If you have any news tips or feedback for the show, send us an email at business at ntd.com. That's the latest from the NTD business team and myself, Chenny Wu. You can follow me on Twitter. For NTD Business, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.